Edinburgh, Scotland, my home for the last few years. A city built in the shadow of a great volcanic rock, nestled between hills and sea. Ancient and made up mostly of stone, it would seem at first to be a place hard and unmoving. But I found the opposite to be true. The city's edges are soft, breathing people and ideas in and out. Ever shifting, ever changing, ever moving. Up above the rooftops, the castle sits in the center of it all, watching as the city shifts beneath it. Last episode, I made my version of an edible thistle, Scotland's national flower. In this episode, I thought I'd try my hand at capturing one of Scotland's most famous landmarks. I'm starting off by making the chocolate shells, which are going to be filled with layers of ginger molasses cake and cinnamon cream. I'm cutting up a round silicone mold into individual pieces, and then to get the rock texture, all you need is tin foil. I'm taking a piece and scrunching it to create some distinct craggy grooves, then pressing it gently into the silicone mold. Next, I'm combining some white chocolate and a bit of cocoa butter and melting them together over a double boiler. To color the chocolate, I'm using some activated charcoal and stirring this through. Then I'm taking a pastry brush and using it to brush the chocolate into each of the tinfoil lined molds before setting them aside to dry. Now for the ginger cookie crumble. In the bowl of a stand mixer, I'm combining butter, white sugar, and brown sugar, along with ginger, cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, and vanilla. Then I'm using the paddle attachment to cream this all together before mixing in an egg and some molasses. For the dry ingredients, I'm combining all-purpose flour, baking soda, and salt, and mixing this through the batter until just combined. I'm adding some sugar to a separate bowl and using it to coat the cookie dough crumbs which I'm just roughly forming by hand. Then I'm getting these all onto a parchment lined baking sheet and baking them at 325 Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes or until crisp. Next, I'm making some ginger molasses cake rounds. I'm combining butter, sugar, ginger, cinnamon, and cloves in the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment. Then I'm adding in some vanilla and creaming this all together before adding in one egg and molasses. For the dry ingredients, I'm combining all-purpose flour, baking soda, and salt. Then I'm adding this and one cup of hot water into the wet mixture in alternating additions. I'm spreading this out onto a lined baking sheet and baking at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes. Once cooled, I'm using a round cookie cutter to cut out rounds of cake. Then using a serrated knife to cut each round in half. Now for the cinnamon whip. In a small microwave safe bowl, I'm combining four grams of powdered gelatin and two tablespoons of water, then leaving this to bloom for 10 minutes. Then I'm just microwaving this for 20 seconds to melt the gelatin and setting this aside so that it can come down to room temperature. I'm adding 250 milliliters of cold whipping cream to a bowl, along with two teaspoons of cinnamon. Then I'm whipping this until it reaches soft peak stage. From here, I'm whisking in some icing sugar and the room temperature melted gelatin before transferring the cinnamon whip to a piping bag. Mm -hmm. 
To assemble the cakes, I'm piping a layer of cinnamon whip in the base of the chocolate shells, followed by a layer of ginger cookie crumble, another layer of cinnamon whip, and a round of ginger cake. I'm working quickly to finish the cakes before the gelatin in the cinnamon whip begins to set. Now I'm just popping these in the freezer. Once the cakes are completely frozen, I can remove the tinfoil molds. To seal the bottom of the cakes and give them an even base, I'm melting some more white chocolate, dipping the bases of the cakes, and pressing them down onto some parchment. I'm taking some fondant and rolling it out using some icing sugar to make sure it doesn't stick. I want it to be really quite thin just because even though fondant tastes fine, it still isn't the most delicious thing in the world, so the less I can use, the better. Then I'm just using a round cookie cutter to cut out circles of the fondant. I tried all sorts of things to get the castle to work. I tried doing it with chocolate and using royal icing to pipe it, but eventually I just settled on printing a photo of it using edible ink on marshmallow paper. This is 100% edible and just tastes like marshmallow. I'm cutting out each image of the castle, then I'm dipping the same round cookie cutter that I used for the fondant into a little bit of icing sugar and using that to give me a rough outline of where to cut the circle. To stick the castles onto the fondant, I'm just brushing a little water onto the surface of the fondant, then gently pressing my marshmallow paper on top. Then I'm setting these aside uncovered to dry and harden. Now for the royal icing which I'll be using to stick the castle to the cake. I'm combining one egg white and two cups of icing sugar in a bowl and whisking until smooth. Then I'm taking out a small amount and thinning it out with some water. Then adding in some blue food coloring. I'll be using this to paint over the sky on the castle images so that they look a little bit more three-dimensional. For the other icing, I'm adding in some activated charcoal and whisking it through until smooth, then transferring this to a piping bag with a small round tip. The last thing left to do is to prep the isomalt dome. In a pot, I'm combining isomalt and a touch of water. I want this to look kind of like wet sand. Then I'm heating this over medium heat until it reaches 338 degrees Fahrenheit then setting this aside to cool for five to 10 minutes. When the isomalt is cool enough, it will form a clear layer on the bottom of a ring mold. To make the dome, allow this layer to droop downwards naturally, then gently using your fingers, pull the isomalt down. Now all that's left to do is to bring everything together.
In next week's episode, I'm making a dish I call the Sky Boat. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification button so you're alerted when the next episode is live. If you'd like to help support me in making more series like this, check out the link for my Patreon below. Before you go, I decided not to take any sponsors for this series and instead wanted to use each episode as an opportunity to pay it forward and promote up-and-coming Scottish-based artists and creatives. In this episode, I wanted to introduce you to an amazing Edinburgh-based artist called Emily Chow. Emily's work is playful, surreal, and honestly, it's just super cool. This illustration of the dancing dinner is one of my personal favorites. You can check out her work on her Instagram at b.ee.chow or on her website at emmymechow.com. If you're interested in supporting a small Scottish-based artist, consider purchasing one of the many beautiful prints she has available on her shop page. Links to all of Emily's pages are in the description box below. Give her a follow and go check out her work. You won't be disappointed, I promise. 